All right, so the topic we're going to be talking about today is the aerothermal behavior of structures with hypersonic conditions. And this is a very important uh, topic of discussion in structures research in the aerospace industry today because uh, aerospace is entering a new age of hypersonics with uh, new air breathing craft. They're going to be operating a hypersonic regime, uh, single stage orbit craft, and increased space travel and reentry vehicles. Um, and for these vehicles, it's very important to have a knowledge of how these structures behave under these extreme conditions. And some current areas of research are getting accurate models of structure flow interactions, uh, material rea uh, reaction predictions at these high uh, heat levels, and accurate stress and strain predictions, as well as testing um, and experimental validation of these models. Now we're going to go over the physical phenomena in hypersonic flows affecting estimation of heat. So the main topics we're going to cover is the boundary layer states, chemical states of environment, and the intersection of shocks and boundary layers. So going over boundary layer state, uh, it re it's really important when it, uh, whether it is laminar, turbulent, or transitional. When it's turbulent, it will lead to higher like heat rates, but it's also good at high Mach numbers and higher altitudes. Also, the best methods for estimating boundary, boundary layer transition points is using data from previous previous flights and also the the linear stability theory. Then, when referring to chemical state of environment. Uh, it's very important to know how at higher temperatures, oxygen mole molecules dissociate, which this did, uh, absor they absorb energy, and the surface temperature lowers. The degree of catalyst of surface influences the heat transfer, and finally, for the intersection of shocks and boundary layers, the regions of very high local heating leads to local hotspots, such as in wings. Hypersonic travel is achieved at Mach 5 or higher. At these extreme uh, speeds, the temperature due to friction from the atmosphere can reach up to 3,000 degrees on the aircraft. At these extreme temperatures, elevation oxidation begins to occur, which essentially strips the aircraft down and is obviously not good because the aircraft is falling apart. The structural problem with this uh, increase in temperature is that higher temperatures can exceed many common materials' maximum service temperature. Uh, this means that as temperature gets higher, the properties of the material change um, and it can weaken the structure. Uh, many existing heat transfer methods are only single use. Um, so an example of this are the ablative coatings that you'd find on the space shuttle or different capsules. Um, that's what you'd see here are ablative tiles. Um, a couple possible solutions to keep the temperature down are active cooling systems, and uh, this works similar to how a car radiator would work. An example of this is right here. Uh, this is an experimental design for aircraft wings um, to keep the leading edge uh, cool. Um, also, reusable ceramic or composite tiles are a possibility that many people are researching. Another solution would be a new ceramic coating, which would be uh, zirconium carbide. This has proven to be 12 times stronger than the current ultra high temperature ceramics that are currently used, and it's very practical economically. And then this graph here shows um, that as temperature increases, and this is where you find the higher Mach regimes in hypersonic travel, um, the specific yield strength of different materials um, starts uh, to change. And that's where you see um, composites and different alloys start being used because they're the only thing um, currently used uh, that can handle these different stresses and strains. And now I'm going to introduce the influence uh, in damage assessment and uh, damage tolerance analysis uh, in a hypersonic case. Uh, so the an analysis methods such as DATT analysis codes might not be work uh, in high supersonic and hypersonic aircraft, which means the methods we learn in the class to analyze the maximum shear, maximum stress may not be useful in this case. And the practice of damage assessment and damage tolerance is not uh, compacted with the rapid design concept. And uh, there are two possible solutions. Uh, the first one is to create a, a reusable hypersonic vehicle, which means we can use this to gain more data than now. Another method is to develop well incorporated uh, thermal spectra with a change in thermal and mechanical. Okay, so to tie everything together, uh, recently in class we've been talking about composite materials and um, in this field of uh, aerothermal research it would be very important to have a great composite material that has a, a heat resistant um, outer shell and then maybe on the inside have something that's more lighter weight. Um, also in class we've been determining the maximum uh, stress and strains that a body can uh, withstand and that will also be very important in um, this research. Obviously it would be much more complex because you're dealing with uh, very high temperatures and very high speeds as well, um, but the basis of it is still um, kind of like the fundamentals of our
studying in class. And um, finally, um, being able to dive deeper into this research is going to require a complex understanding of aerodynamic and thermodynamic research um, that we haven't learned in this class, but uh, we might learn in the future. Thank you.